this is courtesy of Mixmag. This is a quick article, um, courtesy of the DJ called, uh, so, how do you say her name again? Is it Sarah or so Ceres? Oh, I forgot. How do you fucking say her name? My bad. I completely forgot to say her name. Let me see if I can get up on it. Uh, how to say. Yeah, here's a guy. Sersha. Sersha. Okay, Sersha. Is that her name? Sersha. 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 Okay, cool. So this DJ called Sersha um, had recently a residency at Phonics, right? One of my favorite clubs again in London, I think were um, similar to like XOY or in these places. They kind of get a bit of a bad rap because they're a bit commercial in terms of their programming. But I think when they do do these kind of residencies or particular nights, they do have, they do pull in some pretty decent people. The parties are usually pretty good, usually a decent crowd. The only issue is it because in Brixton, me being in East London, boy, it's a bit of a mish to go down there. But in terms of actually a good night, I've can be honest, I've not really ever had a bad night at Phonics. I've got to be honest. So um, I was keeping in mind to go to her residency because I think the last one I think was high and maybe somebody else. I forgot who else was before that. No, maybe be just for James. But it's been a few there. They've and they've done this kind of long term residency thing where the DJ will be in charge for basically the an X amount of weeks back to back. They'll include their friends or bring friends along. But it's a great way to kind of see somebody, especially if you want to kind of see how a person plays back to, for the long sets, which are not something that's really common in the UK. It's mostly a, a European thing, especially Berlin, where you'd go to a club and you see somebody play for like an extended set, six, seven hours, especially if they're a resident. And it's a great way to kind of party, I feel like, because you get um, a way to kind of grow into the night. Of course, as a DJ, so we'll get ready for you to also play stuff that you'd probably never get to play in the dance floor because you usually have to come in and do the banger set of like 12 to one, one to two, two to three, whatever it may be, right? Um, but you get to play, you know, an extended set, you get to play some interesting stuff. The punters get to hear, you go take them on a bit of a journey. And if anything, it turns into a less, less of a sloppy night because you can kind of pace yourself a little bit more. So I love it. And of course, me being a DJ myself, I feel like it's great to just see people, especially, it's great to see clubs at that level, like the Phonics one, like the actual established legit club doing something like this because it gives me hope that maybe in the future other clubs will follow suit and someone like myself an opportunity to kind of play these places because unfortunately the only way to really create breakthrough as a DJ, especially if you don't produce, is to have residency. Like everyone that's kind of broken through has had some sort of residency, whether they've been brought in by somebody, whether they've played at an open deck, someone liked them and they brought them in, but you have to have the opportunity to play in front of people, a, a kind of captive crowd, they give good reviews of you, you maybe hold their attention, the bar spend goes up, whatever. Something to prove that you're good, but you need the opportunity to get there first and to get there, to get behind that deck where she's standing now is so difficult because the talent in this country is just, like this woman isn't even English. I mean, she's Irish and she's a flipping beast. So imagine you're competing with her being Irish and being sick. You're competing with people here being sick. And it's just, you're competing with people coming from overseas, overseas being sick. It's just too much. There's too much competition. And for whatever reason, the clubs don't seem to be able to know how to kind of balance the mix between big ticket people and local people. It's a big thing. It's a big thing. But anyway, regardless, I really like this report, this little essay or report article thing that she put together for Mix Mag, where she basically details her kind of, you know, entire residency and how it felt and how it went down. And I'm quickly going to read some of the posts to you, accompanied by some pics and videos. Um, this is a picture of her sitting down with some friends and fellow artists and people in the industry, I guess, having a dinner and doing the doing the, the, the madness before a gig or after a gig, before a gig, imagine. It says here, definitely one of my favorite parts of this job as she holds that, what's that thing called? Is it? what's that thing um, with a coffee what's a mix of the coffee in someone knows it screaming the cost of the coffee um definitely one of my favorite parts of the job is educating my taste buds from all different cuisines around the world making the effort to meet the promoters and listening to them talk about their cultures and nightlife gives you so much better understanding of the dancers atmospheres and issues they face and all the different nuances that come with running club and festivals it's interesting that she made a point of, of say to say this making the effort to meet the promoters and listening to how much they talk about culture and nightlife are there DJs out there who don't meet the promoters? Like that's, what I thought was a standard procedure in DJ world. Like you get booked to play somewhere, especially somewhere that's not your, you know, it's not your, it's not where you're based. You travel there. They maybe pay for your flights and you meet them before the gig. You have a din, you have dinner, maybe you have a drink and you just kind of run through things, have a chat, catch up, whatever. It's just kind of nice to touch bases, shoot the shit, industry shit. I just assumed that was what everyone does and maybe it's a, just a good way for you to even to if you're a real if you're a real flipping 
Thai ass, it's a great way for you to get a free a free meal out of it, right? Why not? Do some people generally, some of these generally not like to meet promoters? What they do, they just, what, don't answer the phone, ghost them and just turn up at the event. Like, why would you do that? Part of the whole reason why is to, I don't know, like, wouldn't that be fun just to meet the people that kind of booked you and say thanks and show your appreciation? I don't know, just the etiquette thing, like a, you know, manners thing. That's mad, isn't it? Um, I wonder if that's a thing. People like there legitimately, some DJs don't want to, I guess it depends if you're like a really big time person who, Maybe imagine if you're not doing a residency like she was. Maybe you're coming into play at Phoenix, but it's different in the UK because UK is the, no, it doesn't really work in the UK. Because I was gonna say if you if you come to UK and you've got two gigs back to back, imagine you're playing at Phoenix one to three, and then you've got another gig in the UK from like four to seven or something. You might not have time to have dinner because you literally have to kind of you know you're flying in from Paris and yeah, you know I mean there's no time. But I don't think that's true because we don't have that kind of twenty four seven nightlife culture in the UK. It doesn't exist. Um, most clubs close at seven eight and those clubs that close at seven eight don't book other people to come on at like four it's not a thing the main people come on between the hours of like 12 and 6 a.m and that's it um it's only one person plays and then the rest of it might be someone resident uh, but maybe if you're in europe it's different especially in berlin you can definitely be able to do like three sets in a night maybe play you know somewhere 10 to 11 i mean 10 to 12 and then do one place one two whatever blah blah blah, blah. but that's crazy if people do don't just don't want to be out with the promoters like fuck that <laughs> anyway cont continues here we got a dj here holding a taco it says as follows gluten-free tacos at bar borkira which is a restaurant i'm assuming before me and peach got started a good uh but slight meal is essential before a long night i try to avoid the big carbs when they drop um those triple cooked chips on the table who could say no i have to also admit also for me again smaller scale because i'm just playing in local bars and pubs in my area but whenever i have played out i tend to not eat at all similar to when i go to the gym i'm not somebody that likes to have a meal before i go to the gym i tend to like to go fasted even if it's not super fasted like maybe you had my last bite to eat you know the night before at like 8 p.m or something right not crazy long length of time but still i'd like to go with an empty stomach same little when i go to a club i don't want to eat, eat but also i don't want to have my belly can be completely empty so i might make a sandwich might grab a salad you know have a shake or something but it's not like a meal i can't sit down and actually eat but i know some people do like to have an actual munch before they head out so they can somehow you know limit the effects of the alcohol or the drugs or whatnot but i can't, I can't do that man i can't that's too much for me another picture here quite cool one her alongside the dj peach it says um fed no yeah it said fed watered and ready for our six week back a six hour back to back standing in front of the phonics um dj booth i love playing with peach we always have a naughty giggle um and cheeky whispers there's a real change in the energy of the dance floor when you're djing with your best mates the fun you're having together is infectious and the dancers really buzz off it I've, i wonder for the audio files out there because this is similar to what i've noticed with fold and Bergheim fold obviously when it first opened the sound system was impeccable really good super loud it used to vibrate all over the place but i'm assuming over over time maybe complaints have come in from the council and they maybe had to change or limit the sound somewhat it's okay no problem because it's still pretty good the system but it's not as good as it once was but then berghain is interesting because it's concrete also and it's flipping amazing acoustic wise like you know i'm sure they have an, an amazing team that fine tunes that system every single day or people who are hired just to do that or whatever but i think for the most part if you've got a regular club would it be advantageous to just have it be wood flooring or somehow in that regard so that the sound is that dumb to say it vibrates or it kind of carries better or maybe it holds a warmth whatever is there something to be said for that like because i'd imagine maybe concrete wouldn't be the best place wouldn't be the best kind of material to use if you wanted to create a nightclub maybe you wanted want it to be a mixture of concrete and wood i don't know i wonder if that is but who knows but because I, I always like the sound system at phone i don't think it's that different to any other club but i wonder if it's a consideration they put in place to kind of mitigate for the volume restrictions they have i don't know who knows cool picture here behind the booth and you get to see some plaques what they put in the booth which is quite sick featuring the other djs who played there in terms of having a um what should we call it a residency you've got jasper james hi jasper james might be the first one isn't it? jasper james hi uh, who's there who's obviously a dj from ridley road market but that's what i know from well again one of the only 
few DJs in London who was able to blow up from a residency. Most people don't get the opportunity, you know, whatever happens, happens. It's annoying to me in that regard because people like myself don't get the opportunity to play these places, but, you know, we continue. Um, but yeah, she's absolutely smashing it now. She's a legit, like, star. And then we've got a person here called Essa, who I'm not really too sure who that is. Is that Essa or something? Or Tessa, I'm not too sure. But yeah, that's a cool picture. Oops. Oh, man. Let's go here. Come on. Come back again. Yep. Oops. Uh, yeah. Let's no, scroll down a bit. It's too much. Yeah, so Debiana Booth, the caption says as follows. Uh, someone stopped by to give me a little reminder of who the OG Funnage resident is. And I best not forget it, of course, featuring Hi. Then there's a clip here behind the booth featuring a sick tune I'm going to play. Hopefully it doesn't blow the speakers too much. It says a sexy little Madonna edit from an amazing producer called Bodin. I've been hammering this one out for some time now. Guaranteed showstopper. It's the due to it's the due to release very shortly. But more importantly, be sure to check out Bodin's back catalog. Some really killer club tracks in there. I bossed. Uh, sorry, I bossed. I bought most of it. Great view from inside the DJ booth. The hallowed DJ booth. The DJ booth that some beg for. Like, I wonder. Is there anything worse than DJ groupies? People that beg and plead to get behind places like this and want to hang around and skip drinks off the rider and all. It's just like, have some self-respect. Says the guy that, you know, requested a wristband to go into the fabric green room. But we move. Let's play the clip. Let's play the clip. <laughs> Ladies with an attitude, fellas that were in the mood. Don't just stand there, let's get to it. Spike the pose, there's nothing. Ladies with an attitude, fellas that were in the mood. Don't just stand there, let's get to it. Spike the pose, there's nothing. Sick, sick, sick. Um, the number one, see her behind, I guess, at home, organizing tracks and stuff. S saying the following uh, this face is utter where the fuck do I start when planning an all night long set? I usually bring two bags of records and maybe have about 50 digi tracks prepared for it. Um, this is time, no, this is time you get to experiment with those weird tracks you bought but never knew when you'll play take rest be bold for sure yeah it's easy for you to say lady all right you get to play for six hours in one of the best clubs in london some of us only get to play a couple of hours in some spots you know lastminute.com we ain't got time to experiment and play weird tracks we have to either here at the park keep people on the dance floor or we don't get booked again <laughs> do you know what i mean we don't have that we don't have that privilege uh, we continues this is her outside is it was she wearing a pair of rings there oh no no i don't think so but um we're outside phonics looking cool with dj bag already she says as follows feeling bit sweet at the start of my last show phonics thinking how did it go so quick why did i drink so much i don't want it to oh, be ever be over but my back is sore um they do they like my new jacket hey ho and the picture of here signing of the bag another one playing a clip too and i said wobble i've been playing i'm not gonna play the other track i'm just continue but yeah um cool cool stuff regardless i really recommend you check it out i wish people more artists did something like this similar i guess you have to you know take pictures and be mindful to kind of drop down your memories or remember what happened how you felt on the day might require a bit too much work but i think this is a good way to kind of sell the residency especially if you're phonics too it's a great way to sell it because whenever they announce the next one people are going to be down for it i think it sold really well if i'm not assuming as well if i'm not um assuming wrongly i remember seeing a couple of, of, of the events sell out on ra i think the guests weren't too crazy it wasn't like she was bringing in seth trucks large i mean she was bringing in just friends and stuff and it was selling pretty decent so clearly people really love her as a dj and really think she's good at what she does so that is definitely great and you know i'm sure this has definitely made her a better artist going forward so yeah props to her in general um props to phonics for doing the thing and continuing on and i'm eager to see who the next resident will be